Welcome to a new in the mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're gonna start with this item. This is a Swiss army knife from Victory Knox, which I received as a gift from a friend who just visited the seaside city where I live, that is Constanza. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys know this friend of mine. His name is Andreas Spies. He's the guy with the Swiss accent. He also has a YouTube channel and if you're not subscribed to his channel, you should definitely check it out. I'll place a link in the description. He brought this uh, Swiss army knife as a gift from uh, Switzerland and I really like it. It's uh, really well built, high quality. It's not one of the small ones. Andras said this one is for real men and it really feels like a, a really sturdy knife which will be nice to carry when I go out camping or something like that. If you are a Patreon supporter of me or Andres, you have of course seen the uh, pictures he posted while visiting the nearby attractions. Let's continue with uh, these two connectors. These are OBD2 connectors, which I mentioned in a previous video. I have this uh, idea of logging and analyzing the messages that travel on the car's CAN bus and uh, the CAN bus connection is present on the OBD connector. So I ordered some of these connectors in uh, two different uh, styles. One is uh, just the plug with a lot of space inside the plastic housing so you could for example design some kind of circuit and place it inside the connector housing and the other one is a uh, smaller connector which is molded but with wires already attached so you could solder this one to an external PCB module or a longer wire. The pinout is widely available on the internet so you should be able to locate that with a simple Google search. I'm not sure when I'll get the time to work on, on this project but it's something I have in my head and it would be helpful to already have these connectors when I get the chance to start tinkering with the circuit. These are fairly inexpensive on AliExpress and I'll post a link to them in the description below the video. Let me take a moment to present the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. They are offering promotional coupons worth $10 for my viewers. You can use these coupons to order PCBs, so all you need to do is leave a comment below starting with JLC PCB followed by your username which you can find under your account on jlcpcb.com. They will randomly select 5 lucky winners from the comments. Let's continue with an electronic load and as you can see the packaging is not great you get the electronic load and a user manual inside this plastic bag but I don't care about that if it does the job so should we power it on or uh, check the user manual first I think you will agree with me that it's best to power it on first and worry about the manual later so here it is plugged into a power bank I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, protection film from the LCD. It seems like we have a uh, single switch uh, as a user input on this load and a couple of uh, knobs for adjusting the current uh, for coarse and fine adjustment. I would have loved to see a rotary encoder here which could act as both the current adjustment and menu navigation input but this is not how they designed this load. You will notice the load is functional as soon as you plug it in and the lowest setting is 0.2 amps but according to the specs is uh, this load is capable of 3.6 up to 30 volts input, 0.2 amps up to 3 amps of current and up to 25 watts of power. And we have four inputs which we can use. We have a micro USB, a normal sized USB, a USB type C and this, uh, uh, these solder pads uh, which might accommodate a, a connector or not on the side of the load. You have a few different screens which you can use on this load and you can cycle, cycle through them with a short press of the switch. 
and you can also trigger protocols like uh, quick charge 2.0 or 3.0 or adjust the uh, protection thresholds for over temperature and over power protection the resolution is 1 milliamp 1 millivolt but the ac accuracy might not be that great i haven't checked yet it has a built-in cooling fan and a heat sink as we can see it's always on and I'm not sure if it's correlated to the temperature of the heatsink or if it's uh, always maxed out. It might not seem like a big, big heatsink and cooling fan but it somehow manages to keep it stable at 50 degrees Celsius if you sink about 20 watts with the load. On the back we have this uh, aluminium uh, plate shielding the components so let's remove this to take a closer look at the circuit. I hate these uh, cheap uh, screws that they sometimes use on, uh, on products coming from China because they, they strip so easily. It's like their one time use. And here is the circuit. It looks like we have an STM32 microcontroller. Well, actually it's not an STM32 because it looks like it's manufactured by someone else. Uh, probably a uh, Chinese uh, brand, I'm, I'm not recognizing that. But it's definitely not an STM because it's not made by ST Microelectronics. And the analog um, support circuitry for measuring the current, here are our uh, two current shunts. The MOSFET is a uh, Nair F. 44 I believe yes it's an IRF Z44N we might have some DC to DC converters here to uh, power the load because it is powered from the input port and I quite like the the construction of this load is a really compact load we also have a uh, serial port on this side so it might be spitting out some data on that uh, serial port I'll have to uh, probe that with the scope to see if it uh, outputs any data. So I kind of like this uh, small load. Uh, I got it to test uh, various power banks and USB supply circuits. It's uh, just uh, very compact and convenient to use and so far I like it. It even comes with this smell of old electronics. Not sure why because it's fairly recent. It's probably related to how it was stored before it was shipped to me. But if you're interested in getting one of these there will be a link in the description below. Next I have some heat shrink tubing because you know there is no mailbag video without some heat shrink. But what can I do? I just have a high usage rate on this stuff. And this time I have some transparent tubing, it's 10 millimeters and 25 millimeters I believe. Great for small PCB modules uh, or this wider one could even be used to go over an 18650 battery. But make sure you don't overheat the battery in the uh, shrinking phase. And next I have some automotive crimp connectors and these are specifically for the uh, VAG group. That is Volkswagen, Audi, Skoda and Seat and more specifically these will fit the connectors on the body control module which is located somewhere under your dashboard. It's a module that controls a lot of stuff present on the body of the vehicle so if you'd like to do a retrofit to add some functionality that it's missing from your car these connectors should be helpful to do the operation properly and wire things to the body control module. I also have a crimp tool with multiple crimping heads so I'm hoping at least one of those will be uh, compatible with uh, this type of uh, crimp. And if you haven't seen the review video for the crimp tool I will definitely link it on screen right now so you can check it out. I was pretty happy with the crimp tool. But there is a small problem with this uh, order because uh, the product listing said 100 pieces and I received only 21 pieces in this uh, package. So uh, I've opened a dispute on AliExpress and they refunded me partially for the ones missing. Next I have a set of uh, JST connectors. So I got the uh, plug with the wires and the through hole uh, receptacle for these. These are JST GH 1.25 mm connectors and they should be good for up to 1 amp and 50 volts. Quite small and compact, nice to use on uh, very small PCBs 
where you don't have a lot of space available. I always prefer to get uh, the connectors in the surface mount version, but uh, sometimes uh, it can be tricky to find them on AliExpress or it might cost four times as much than the through hole option just because there might be only one seller offering it so he will raise the price. I was working on a PCB where I wanted some small connectors so I ordered these to use them on the prototype. Uh, now if you're making some modules and you are selling them for profit I would not recommend you get these from AliExpress. They might have reliability issues long term, they might have imperfect uh, crimps so you are better with uh, purchasing your connectors from a known manufacturer. But for prototypes and uh, hobby projects they're uh, good enough. As always there will be a link in the description below the video. My next product is called MH Tiny and it's a development board based on the ATtiny 85 microcontroller from Atmel, well now microchip. It can run up to 16 MHz but it's probably less powerful and uh, it has less peripherals than your typical Atmega 328. Nonetheless you can do much with one of these and I just happened to be working on a project uh, that has one of these ATtiny tiny microcontrollers and I ordered this uh, development board um, to have as a backup if I need to test something outside of my own prototype PCB. The main advantage to these ATtiny tiny chips is that they should consume less in sleep while providing a bunch of IOs just like their bigger alternatives and they, they also might be cheaper. Uh, so they're great for low power applications where you need lots of uh, I.O. pins. My next uh, product is a um, simple inline filter and the product listing said this is made out of uh, general purpose polystyrene and it also said this is uh, fit for aquarium so don't go using these on anything else where the filtering is more critical. It has uh, some 4 mm thick ports so I think it should be easy to slip some aquarium silicone hose over these ports. I bought this to filter some water being pumped from a small reservoir to some spraying nozzles. The problem is some dirt has gotten into the tank and it's clogging the nozzles regularly. But after ordering this I realized that it's also a possibility that the filter will, will now get clogged um, as well. Not as quick as the, the thin nozzles but still I haven't fixed the issue which requires cleaning the storage tank for water. But anyway I wanted to, to show you this uh, small filter and maybe you'll find some other use for this type of uh, filter. Uh, you can find these for cheap on AliExpress so I don't think um, I will regret getting this one. My next product is uh, quite interesting even though it's very compact and doesn't use a lot of parts. We can immediately identify a uh, type C a uh, USB port, a small tactile switch, an STM32 microcontroller um, from ST Microelectronics and another smaller chip right on the back of the USB-C connector which I suspect handles the USB-C interface and connects via uh, I don't know an SPI bus to the microcontroller. We also have a few passives and a small RGB LED on this uh, small module. So this is a USB type C power delivery trigger module. Basically with this switch you can trigger the various voltage levels available on a power delivery compatible charger. But let me show you how it works. Uh, I have a uh, USB type C power delivery charger uh, connected and powered on on my bench and uh, with this USB type C cable will be able to test the uh, power delivery protocol. So now with each press of the switch I can trigger the various voltage level levels available on a power delivery con compatible charger. So this one for example can go up to 20 volts and the LED present on the module will signal the different uh, modes with a different color. For example for 20 volts we have blue, uh, we have red for 5 volts, uh, green for 9 volts or it should have been orange maybe for 9 volts and green for 12 volts, uh, blue with uh, green for 15 volts and just blue for 20 volts. Now this can be extremely helpful if you're trying to debug or test your power adapter. You can plug this module to check if it switches through the different uh, levels and then you can leave it at the required level and do a load test for example. 
I find this pretty useful, especially as I'm working on a project which uses a USB Type-C interface. I've also seen other modules capable of switching uh, even the Qualcomm QC protocol as well uh, together with the power delivery protocol, but this one only deals with power delivery protocol. It looks like the uh, pinout on the um, output uh, is for one of those 2.5mm uh, screw terminals. So that will be handy for attaching some uh, wires on the output to hook up to a dummy load, for example. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. My next item is a 7 decade resistor board. You might ask why a 7 decade? Well, because there are 7 decades here on this uh, module and that means each one of these uh, columns is one decade of resistance. The resistance is adjustable with uh, these uh, jumpers and by moving these uh, jumpers uh, you can select from 0 ohms up to 9.99 mega ohms. As uh, shown here in the silk screen uh, the tolerance is 1% for these uh, resistors and the uh, power rating is half a watt. But keep in mind the fact that this is a cheap board coming from China, so I wouldn't be using this for any reliable measurements. Instead, consider it a quick hack if, that you can keep around for whenever you uh, need to insert an odd value resistor in your circuit, something that you don't have in your set of resistors, so just so you can test something. The output total resistance uh, is presented on this uh, uh, 2-pin connector on the right of the module, so you can use uh, DuPont wires, for example, to connect to this. And the idea of a decade resistor board is interesting, especially for beginners, so I would suggest to search for some info on these types of circuits, look at the schematic and understand how it works, even maybe build one of your own. Next up, I have a small 45 degrees angled female to male SMA adapter. I got this one from AliExpress and I know it's uh, kind of low quality. I know it adds quite a bit of loss in the transmission line and it's not really rated for anything above 2.4 gigahertz. It's not ideal to be using one of these, but sometimes you really need it. And I'm always trying to avoid using it, but sometimes you have that odd antenna which doesn't quite fit a receiver so I need to insert one of these to make the coupling. The quality also affects how many cycles you get out of these. From what I've been reading on other people's experiments, these are good for up to around 200 cycles and then they start to lose the plating on both the outside and the inside and the middle pin uh, connection is not as tight as before. They're not great, but they're not terrible either, as uh, someone famous would say in a recent movie. And continuing in the RF section, I also got some of these uh, MMCX RG402 connectors. Uh, I need these for my FPV stuff, antennas, video receivers, and I'm noticing that these are very small connectors. They also have these uh, small caps included, uh, which I don't really know how to attach, but I'll have to do some research on YouTube to see if I can find a tutorial on how to assemble these uh, small connectors. This way I'll be able to build uh, custom length uh, Pagoda antennas to better fit the RC planes that I'm uh, uh, flying. I also got this uh, different uh, mounting styles. These are also MMCX uh, connectors, but uh, they are fit for board mounting and these are the uh, female counterpart. I'm not sure if I'll ever need these, but they were so cheap, so I thought I'd get this, uh, this mounting style as well. Same as always, you'll find links for all of these products in the description below the video. That was all for today, I hope you found something interesting in this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below and I would also really appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.